Howdy of you delicious people. I'm here today to review a movie called Held. So, right out of the gate, there may be a point in this movie where this movie may not be for everyone. Uh, and some people may not like a certain point of this movie. But, like, that's not the reason I'm overall reviewing this movie. Uh, the, I think the main reason why I am going through and reviewing this is because I had reviewed uh, in the early stages of this YouTube channel, uh, and I tag-teamed it with a movie called It Follows. I reviewed this movie called Deadly Virtues. And after reviewing a movie called Deadly Virtues, like, while I was watching this movie, it kind of had some feel of that kind of movie. There was something about it where I was just like, this feels like that movie, but uh, it really didn't seem like the overall goal played out. Uh, but if you come into this review kind of wanting to see another movie, go ahead and definitely check out Deadly Virtues. You can probably go into an app called uh, Let Us See Movies or Fox HD Movies and go and watch that movie and you'll probably like the twist ending or the twists and turns that that movie is to go into. I thoroughly enjoyed that movie for eventually how we have the twists and the turns of that film. Uh, but like it just comes off as a guy that is just uh, hostaging two people. Hostaging? That's probably not a word. Uh, taking people hostage, but there's more to that. So, and there's more to this movie. So, uh, so teeing it up for people, we have both Emma and Henry that are to eventually go into, I guess, this, uh... Like, I don't think it's their normal home. I think it's some kind of special, like, home away from home for them, I I believe. So, eventually we find out that this couple is to all of a sudden have their own home be played against them. And all of a sudden, we have this jigsaw of a character that is to basically tell these people what all to do, and if they don't do what they're supposed to do to the letter, they'll get electrified because there is something jammed uh, behind their ear that is going to force them to do everything that uh, these people are to say. So, going through this movie, we just start to have this kind of like, like, I would say probably old-fashioned, but, like, there's still quite a few stuff that people should just easily do. Um, but it kind of feels like there's some old-fashioned things going on here, which people could just, like, give or take what ends up happening. But, uh, like, this is to almost kind of create this Leave it to Beaver lifestyle where there is to eventually start to become a defiance of that, which that's when I actually enjoy this movie towards the very end when there is to be a, in a cryptic-like sense, a comeback, let's just say, a figuring things out that is to go on here, and then there is to be a spot where, uh, where someone is to get, uh, a lot more confidence or maybe more than one maybe person uh get more confidence uh so that way i can kind of spell that or i can kind of trickle that out cryptically so like people won't feel like they uh had gotten like short-sighted or what like hey man you basically just ruined this movie uh but anyways Going in here, uh, we find something out about this, about one of our characters that is to ruin this, ruin this relationship. 
And then figure out a way to try and save it also. Like, we have this creepy esh like guy that is trying to save uh, these people's relationship. But also, like, having the truth be out there, which... Like, get everything out there that it's like, hey, like, uh, this person did this, so what? Like, uh, like, hug one another, forgive one another, and let it go, and, like, stay together kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, so, really that's, I think, where I probably have to just kind of put, uh, this in a cryptic thing to be called... Uh, and to go into spoilers about this movie, because uh, there isn't much, to, <laughs> there isn't much beyond this point that I can just be like, okay, let's just go into spoilers. Uh, so I don't know. It feels like this couple is very distant from one another. Like you can kind of feel that throughout the entire film, but they are too. Like, so there's, there's weird distance, but they're supposed to be, like, madly in love. But they're, like, it seems like they're always, like, ten feet away from one another throughout this whole entire film. Like, there's some weird distance thing that I just thought was so weird in this movie. So, I think it's about that time to go into spoilers. Let's go and break down this whole movie, just in case people want a taste of what is to actually be a part of this film. Maybe you'll be more interested, maybe you won't, maybe you'll just uh, go on and watch Deadly Virtues. <laughs> or any number of other things that probably have some uh, skin in the game, let's just say. Because uh, there isn't much of a part of this where we are to see uh, topless things or unpantsing or much in here. So if that's what you're looking for, might need to be uh, going and traveling elsewhere, but... But yeah, but, uh, so let's go into here, let's go into this coveted double five, uh, if I haven't already. So let's go into spoiler times for that time again to spoil this movie. Hulu, everybody check this out on Hulu if that's what you want to do, but let's go into it. So, uh, very beginning of this movie, we have supposedly a young Emma who was to be locked into a car with someone and had that person kind of take advantage of her at a young age. Because I guess her boyfriend was willing to just let uh, his friend go and have his way with young Emma. So, all of a sudden we have Emma, who's much older Emma, who is to be driving her way to the home of which Emma and Henry are to share. So, <clears throat> uh, Emma is to be driven by, I think, a guy named Joe, uh, who is this driver. So... They drive her all the way there, and the driver is just like, you know what, like, this was kind of a long drive. Like, could you give me a little extra for all of my hardship of having to drive you here? So Emma goes and kind of gives him a little, like, tip or whatever, and he's like, oh, thank you. So Emma goes into the house, takes a shower, all kinds of things, bath pool, whatever, any number of things, and all kinds of stuff. So Henry is to make his way to this, uh, to this home, and so, like, they kind of pop a bottle of wine, but Henry is to eventually just be like, you know what, I'm just tired. Like, I'm just exhausted. So Henry is to go to sleep with his wife in the same bed, uh, oh, Henry also is to hear from his, uh, from his co-worker 
that uh, his co-worker had gotten engaged and it had all worked out. Like, I I want to say it's either a co-worker or it's his, uh, like, it's his son, but I'm not quite sure exactly who that person was exactly. Uh, like, I'm assuming that it was probably his son uh, because... Uh, like, that guy had gotten a ring from, I think, Emma. So, like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, the age range of these characters. So, just to figure out if it was just some co-worker or whatever. So, uh, that whole thing was done and out of the way. So, Emma is to go to sleep and all of a sudden... She is to kind of wake up in the middle of it because we have this, uh, this assailant who is wearing this, like, this, this kind of, like, uh, 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 like, statuesque looking mask upon his face. And so this is a guy that is to douse, uh, both of these people with drugs to have them eventually wake up. And them to basically be told what's what. So when these two are to eventually wake up, Emma is to mention that she thought that she saw somebody in the house. And Henry's like, well, did you set the alarm? Because they have like alarm, like they have an a. Uh, they have a smart home or something like that where, like, everything is to be locked up and whatever. So Emma's like, well, yeah, like, but it didn't go off. So Henry is to eventually go and have Emma just get some clothes on, try to head outside, and eventually what ends up happening is they're like, well, like, like, their phones are gone, and they're thinking, hey, like, we should try to get out of here. Henry goes in the car, the keys are gone, and so they're like, dude, we, we should probably just book it, right? We should just probably just run in some direction. Well, that leads Henry to get a freaking, like, smack over his head, supposedly, for his troubles. But that just leads him back into the house. So... Eventually, there is to be a voice that is to go over, like, the intercom of this home. And there is to be a TV on that is to kind of show that these people are being watched. So, what they're going to do here is they are going to tell these people, don't try to leave again, obey us, and... Like, do what we tell you, ba 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 ba. So, eventually, what these people are eventually forced to do is to both put on some nice clothes, and when they when they are to head out uh, from their bedroom to their kitchen. Uh, the masked man is to tell Henry to open the door for, uh, for Emma. So, of course, Emma's to say thank you, and then she's to walk out. So, uh, like, Emma was also not wearing the exact same clothes that she was to have gone to bed in. And every single piece of clothing has all changed, bizarrely, in their in their closet to uh, showcase this kind of much more leave it to beaver kind of attire. So Emma is to go and start making food and the voice is to come over uh, on the intercom or whatever. Like the voice is to make sounds and talk telling Henry that he needs to go and get this laptop. Henry goes and gets it, sits down, and then it's to open this thing up, and it's like, oh, there's no Wi-Fi. There's no way for us to 
be able to contact the outside because there's no cell phones. There's this bizarre old rotary phone that I'm assuming that there's no way for them to call out from because I'm sure they perfectly worked that out. But it would have been nice if they would have just played with it a little because they had time to kill here. So Henry is to open this thing up and there's one file. Hmm. I wonder what Henry is going to have to do. <laughs> I think he's probably just going to have to try and surf the web for a good solid like 20 minutes. No. The voice is telling Henry to open up the file and Henry does. So Henry opens his file to see a video that conveniently is to have proof that Emma was having an affair on Henry with one of Henry's friends or somebody that he knew. And so Henry is just like, oh my God, like you had an affair with me? You were sleeping around? How could you? How could you? How dare you have an affair? Like, and. But so the voice is trying to forcibly mend fences or to try to forcibly put right of this. So what ends up happening next is. Because in my mind, like, there is some wheels a-churning because, uh, because seeing this movie. And once we get towards the end, maybe I'll talk about those wheels that were a-churning. Uh, especially once we get to one probably important part of this movie. So, Henry is to go into the bedroom after eating, uh dinner which he had to forcibly say was good <laughs> he was just like the food is good like meh like and the voice is like compliment your wife like <laughs> compliment her like really having to force all these kinds of like really like belittling this guy to forcibly have to say all of this stuff or he's going to get electrocuted because that's a, like, if you don't do what they say, electrocute you. Uh, so they go in the bedroom and now the voice is telling Henry to like disrobe his wife. There's still a nightgown on. You don't really see anything. And then Emma is to disrobe uh, Henry's shirt. Now they're forced to like say their I love you's and say that I want you and say all this other stuff consist and so the voice is telling Henry to make love to his wife. So Henry goes on and is to tell his wife like if you say stop like uh, at any point in time, like, I'll understand. So, Henry is just to kiss all up on, on his wife and almost go into throw passion, but then Henry is to be like, you know what? Like, I don't think I can do this. Like, I think I should stop. Like, I think I should, uh, like, not do this. And then the, uh, the voice electrocutes Henry, knocking him down. Emma is like, oh no, like, stop, stop. So, uh, Henry ends up getting, like, shocked so bad that his ears are bleeding. We have these spots where the, like, the ear is bleeding moments where people do the wrong things. They try to escape. They do any number of things. And Emma is just kind of bandaging, uh, Henry's wounds, so to speak, of his ear, which is to just kind of like wipe it clean. And so that's when they kind of have this moment about this affair. And Henry is to just be like, well, 
Like, I asked you if you wanted me to stop, and you didn't. Like, why didn't you say stop? And Emma's like, I don't know. I really don't know. Where, like, I guess because she had just... been a person who had became a person that might not have been able to say no, or maybe in this spot, like, where she couldn't have said no before... Maybe she felt she couldn't say no here. I don't know. Like, I don't know what the breakdown of that is mentally, but, uh, so we push on in this movie. Uh, I know there might be some bits of things here and there that happen afterwards, but, uh, the next thing that is to eventually play out here is we have Emma's cheating guy that ends up coming into the fray of this whole scene where, uh, Oh, no, wait, there, wait, wait, wait. There might be a spot before this. Yeah, there might be. Let's go to that spot. Either way, like, uh, like, we'll still get back to that spot. So, Emma, while she was, I guess, cooking the night before, had realized there might be a secret passageway that is to... Be underneath this, uh, like, cooking, like, cooking cabinet of a place. So, Emma goes and pulls off this one wood piece and has her husband help her. Emma goes down there, and that is to all of a sudden trigger, uh, the voice guy who is to sneak into the home and medicate both, uh both Henry and and both Emma because we naturally assumed that the voice was outside focusing on the one driver because the driver was outside talking to both uh, Henry or Emma and Henry and Emma were like banging on the door like desperately like, hey, help, help. But, like, I don't think this guy could hear a thing. Uh, like, Emma was trying to flash some lights uh, through the keyhole to attract uh, the guy over the door. But he doesn't get there. Or when he does get there, it gets conked out. So, but Emma finds that sneaking passageway. But then eventually just gets drugged for her trouble because she doesn't go very far. And she ends up getting dragged by the guy who has the voice and then medicated. And then she ends up waking up to have the uh, the cheating man in, in Henry and Emma's midst. So Henry is to talk to this guy. And just be like, how could you have slept with my wife? Like, how could you have done this to me? Blah, 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 blah. So, Henry is to grab the knife just in this upsetting manner. Just be like, I am going to kill this guy. Like, he, like, like, I think he's going to ruin my marriage. Blah, blah, blah. So, Emma is trying to stop him from doing all this. And all of a sudden, the voice is to say, like, no, Henry, you can't kill this guy. Uh, if anything, Emma has to. Emma has to kill this man so that way your marriage can be saved kind of thing. So, uh, so Henry is now to be electrified so that way he doesn't, like, have any, like, uh, involvement in this. The voice is telling Emma to do it, and Emma is now at this crossroads of, like, I don't know what to do, like, I don't want to do this, uh, 
this guy is to tell Emma that, like, he really is, like, in love with her. Anything that I can possibly say to avoid death and whatever. But Emma stabs this guy, kills him to free her husband. Proving that, uh, like, Emma is wanting to save their marriage. So, that was a big step. Uh, so, Emma and Henry are to go back into, uh, into the living room or into the bedroom. And Henry is to go off and say, like, hey, you know what, like, uh, like, you've done enough, like, I will go and I'll take care of the body and like, I'll like, like, and we'll never have to speak of this again, blah, 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 blah. So Henry is supposedly going off. But Henry wanted to give Emma this drink, this alcohol to just kind of like, kind of maybe relax her because of all the stress of this whole moment. So, Emma all of a sudden is to take a little, like, sip of this drink. And then she's like, you know what? Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, maybe there is a little bit of something here. Like, maybe... Considering Emma was seemingly the only one that really did any true wrongdoing here. How is it all of a sudden that Emma is going to have to be the real true like culprit of everything here all of a sudden? But then wait a minute. Emma is to go and take little sips of drink and then kind of go under her little coffee table and pour some of it out, take a little sip, and then pour the rest of it into the floor. And then Emma is going to pretend to take a little nap, little nappy poo. And all of a sudden, we see the guy who is the voice and we see Henry who is tag teaming this project. I'm like, wait a minute, what? What? What's going on here? Cause Henry made like a statement in the part of this movie where he's like, well, we don't know if it's just one guy or not. I'm like, hmm, I wonder why you're saying that Henry. Hmm, so that way you can kind of make her, uh, who is Emma, feel very at ease. Or unease, uh, let's just say that. So, Emma is... While, like, Emma is to assume to be down, and they're like, oh, okay, great. Like, we're gonna, we're just gonna continue on doing what we're doing and, and cleaning up and all kinds of stuff. While they're kind of thinking Emma is just drugged out, Emma goes on to a secret part of this home to find this video about this whole pitch of some bizarre company that is to be this leave it to beaver kind of way of doing things which I didn't like at all, but then I'm like, oh my god, this is like a freaking, like, some weird master planish crap that I'm just like, whoa, like, this is just insane. So, Emma is to find out that there is a company in place that is to try and correct a marriage or try to have supposedly a husband who is to have complete control 
over his wife. I'm like, what the heck is this? So, supposedly they are to put this thing together that is to have this woman that is going to be completely obedient to her husband and they put these scenarios together to supposedly perfect that. And I'm just like, oh my god. Like, so, if anybody's marriage is on the rocks, like, send them to this guy, freaking Joe Schmova person. Supposedly he recreates uh, the one-sidedness of a relationship to bring him back to leave it to beaver freaking days. Where, uh, where I guess, like, these people want this kind of lifestyle. So Emma's like, ah, oh, so like, so somebody had a plan, huh? Somebody had a plan. Hmm. Wow. Like, kind of makes you really think that the person that you really loved, you didn't really know. Um, plus also, like, I'm wondering if Henry knew about all of this all along. And it's like, well, we're going to correct that behavior. Both. Mother, uh. So Emma's just like, well, I'm going to come up with a master freaking plan too. <laughs> so Emma is to be hauled into this car, like still like awake but she's pretending to be just like i'm drugged still i'm drugging husband henry is to put her into this car and then he's to just be like i know you're asleep so i'm just gonna kiss on you and do whatever i want and we're like yeah like i have my thumb under you and it's just like just you wait there buddy just you wait <laughs> just you wait so, uh, so Emma is to go and, like, take her, her obvious implant, uh, so that way she doesn't get electrified through her ears or whatever freaking ear thing that they do to just affect sounds or whatever they ruin her hearing. Uh, like, she digs that out. And while she's doing that, eventually the voice guy comes uh, and sees Emma is awake. And so now Emma is fighting with this, uh, with this black masked guy, or this black, uh, what is the guy's actual name? Uh, Nathan? Yeah, Nathan. So, Emma is to eventually tossle with this guy, but eventually what ends up happening is Emma takes a freaking shovel to this guy and freaking kills him. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Who's going to be, be obeying who now, mother... Uh? And so, Henry is just kind of like walking along and Emma's like, oh my god... Like, Henry, as she's, like, cleverly taking the the watch from uh, Nathan before Henry is to arrive to put in her pocket. Emma's like, Henry, oh my god. Like, I just awoke just seemingly out of nowhere. And, like, I found this, m this man. And so he was attacking me. So I defended myself. And Henry's like, oh my god. Like, wow. Like... Like, I guess, like, we should, we should get out of here. Like, maybe this is the only guy. Maybe we're safe. So Emma's like, yeah, maybe we should try to get out of here now. And Henry's just like, well, wait a minute. Maybe we should go back in the home. Like, maybe we could find something there, like a phone or something. Maybe we can find some something to 
Like, try to, like, escape. Like, maybe there's a way now. And you can just tell that Henry is to consistently sneak up behind Emma while this whole walking scenario is going on. But Emma's just like, well, like, and she's heading to the door and Emma's just like, well, like, aren't you going to open the door for me? And Henry's like, of course I will. Like, uh... Emma's like, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> So, Emma, Henry go into the home, and eventually this all leads to, eventually Emma getting the watch and trying to turn it on, and just be like, yeah, freaking, I'm gonna get at, uh, I'm gonna get at Henry. So she ends up turning it on and it's the wrong one that isn't actually in place into Henry. And so that cues up Henry to realize what's going on. And then he's just like, well, like, I guess I have to kill you now because there's no way for you to obey me. There's no way this is going to work. Because what... Nathan had said in this whole video, or what they were trying to do, was to pin this murder on Emma, so there was no way for Emma to not be completely obedient to Henry, because there's footage of her murdering someone, and I guess that evidence being held over Emma was going to be the thing of just the the smoking gun if Emma was not going to be completely obedient or the way that Henry wants Emma to be obedient to him. So, but Henry is just like, well, that time is over. I'm going to have to kill you now. And... So now we have this knife that is to be in play, where they're kind of tossing for the knife. Uh, there's this back and forth thing going on with the knife. Henry's to stab Emma in the, I think, the leg, and I think maybe the chest. Uh, but Emma's last big thing is to tell Henry, like, I loved you. As she ends up going and adjusting the, uh, again, watch to see if there's another thing out there where it will be into Henry's, like, ears. All of a sudden, the thing does work. Henry did have one thing of, uh, a thing in his ear. And so Emma puts that on full max and then she dips that into the drink and it short circuits. So this guy is going to be like basically shocked or electrified or to have his ears being blown out to death uh, over and over and over again. Just be tortured like Emma was through this whole scenario. And then she just walks out. She just freaking walks out, goes into her car, uh, picks up the driver and just drives off. So the driver is to call her by her last name. And Emma is just like, no, just call me Emma. As she like drives off and she's like, hmm, like, yeah. Like, I feel good because I, uh, like, I freaking did it. I survived and I, f like, I'm finally, like, escaped out of this relationship. It would have been nice if we would have had a little bit more relationship backstory between this two couple where, like, Emma could have said something as simple as, like, well, you were never there for me, or something like that, where, like, this guy was at his work way too often, uh, like, he was doing some something where he didn't really care about Emma, or whatever, or her needs, or something, but there was never that there. They wanted to try to keep this as mysterious as possible about this relationship, and, like, that also, that whole, like, someone getting engaged thing 
was to kind of make this couple kind of reflect on like like how different their relationship is compared to this uh, other one that's just blossoming or just happening or whatever and where like we have a person that is happy in his relationship to seeing this couple that is just like yeah we're just here <laughs> like we're just 10 feet away from uh, one another but we're still here uh but yeah like, that's all I wanted to say about Held. People could probably like this movie, hate this movie, feel indifferent about it. But at the end of the day, I could just say it was another thing that I reviewed. Uh, thank you, anybody, for watching this or listening to any of the words that were coming out of my mouth. So thank you. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody.